What's up everybody? Today we're going to take a look at how I plan, film and edit my YouTube videos. So first things first, we're going to look at how I plan the YouTube videos. What I like to do is get an idea for a video, write it down in the notes on my phone and then also write other things which are going to be included in the video. And as I have a channel for photography and magic, I have two separate notes and in each of those there is videos for each of those niches. As you can see here on the notes, this is the actual video notes that I've created for this video. So I'm going to go through and sort of take all the bullet points and actually discuss that in the video itself. And I use this as a note so when I'm going through and actually doing the recording I don't miss anything off and I get included in everything that I want. I did used to shoot some videos with a teleprompter so I'd have the iPad set up and it would be going through the script that I would write up for the video itself. When the videos came out they had all the information that was needed but it wasn't as natural or as real as I wanted the videos to be. It was quite sort of basic and just reading the text so it wasn't that good I didn't think. So having the notes and the bullet points is a much better way to do it. And the second thing is I head to the studio so I can do the recording. So you may have seen the studio many times in recordings. We've got here, this is for the clothing and also the photography stuff and it's sort of a bit of a mix of both really. So I use this for all the videos that I record. Um, I used to do some stuff at home but it's much easier here so I've got the thing set up. It's much quieter, correct and also in the back what I can do is because it's a complete black room I have full control over the lighting. So I've turned off all the lights in the studio and I'm just heading around to the back room. So as you can see here, this is the setup and all I have to do is when I turn off the main light and also these other lights, the room is completely black. So see when I turn these neon lights on, these are what's the background and also the front light which is here. And that's my lighting setup and I've got full control over exactly how I want to have it. It's time now to take a look at the lighting and what I used to do is these neon signs used to be all the way over here around either TV. The only issue with that is when I was recording videos I had to stand up and I had this net lighting which was quite good lighting as well. However when I wanted to do videos where I was sitting down I couldn't really do it. So we recently got this sofa for the studio and I decided that was going to be my new shooting area. So I moved all these neon lights just had them a bit more spaced out than what they were. I also installed some panels just to keep the audio a bit better and give it a bit of a different background. Then onto the main light, what I use for it is the Godox SL60W. And as you can see there, that's only on 28% and it's a really, really bright light. Um, attached to the light for the modifier, I have this big octobox. So it gives a nice soft light coming down and you just direction it just here where I'm gonna be sitting on the sofa and that's spot on and obviously just a bit more ambient light, we have this in. So that's it for the lighting, and now we're gonna go on to the audio aspect of it. What I used to use when I was recording was this Rode Video Mic Go, and have that plugged into the camera, and it would record the sound facing towards me. It was quite good, however, it was still a bit echoey, and since then, I've been upgrading things, and just trying to make things better. So I've now got one of these Mono XLR microphones, and on the photography channel, you'll see, be able to see a review and unboxing of that and stuff. And what I've done is I've linked it up to the Zoom H4n, and that leads into the camera. So when I'm recording, I'll sit back here and have the mic recording, it goes through the audio device, links into the camera, and I get really, really good audio from that. Now it's time to talk about the camera. And I use Fuji equipment, and the main camera that I use is the Fuji X-H1. I also have some Fuji X-T2s, so when I've had the double videos where you can have the picture-in-picture picture sort of style video where I'm doing cards and things like that. That is the second video camera that I use. And what I do, I've got a mount so I can put it anywhere I want. It's got a ball head so I can position it and it's all great and everything like that. So we're just going to take a look at the main camera now and go from there. So this is the Fuji X-H1. As you can see here, this is the 16-55mm f2.8 lens that I have attached to it. And I have that linked up to a Lilliput monitor so I can see what's going on. Because on the back here, it does have a screen, however, it only flips out like that or flips up. It doesn't actually flip around so I can see what I'm doing. All I have to do is turn the camera on. It links up to the monitor here so I can see what I'm doing over there. As you can see here, regarding settings, my shutter speed is 1 over 50th. I'm on f2.8 and ISO 500. Uh, F2.8 is quite nice to keep the background a bit blurry and keep it a bit more cinematic. And as you can see here, this is the monitor that's coming up when it focuses in. So there we go, there's a focus on the monitor. And keeping ISO low, it's going to keep the grain off and also you can 
bump up this light if needed to get extra light and that sort of thing. And then as you can see here, I'm using the Canon G7X just to do the behind the scenes. I love this because it's got the pop out screen. So when I'm doing stuff like this, I can just flip out the screen, talk to the camera and go from there. However, when I'm doing the proper videos for YouTube and things like that, I much prefer the Fuji camera with the monitor just for the quality of it. So first thing that I do is when I'm shooting, I'll have this all set up and whatever I'm shooting on, I will create a thumbnail image for that. So for this one here, just say I'm gonna do something on a phone. I can have this, pull the pose of the camera, hold that for a second, and then when you're editing it, you can grab that picture and use that as a thumbnail for your video so you don't have to set up a, a separate camera to take a picture and all that sort of thing. So let's talk over the lighting, the camera, and the audio, and also the process which goes into creating the videos. Now what I do is start shooting. So all I do is get up to the camera, press the record button, sit down, get the composition correct that I want to be in, and just start rolling it off. So I'll have the phone handy nearby so I can always refer back to it and make sure I've covered everything, but then just sort of shoot it. If you make a mistake, then just stop, Re if you make a mistake, just stop, reshoot that bit that you made the mistake and you can crop it in and cut it in Adobe Premiere Pro or whatever editing program you're using after the fact. Rather than have to stop it recording and start it again and do all that sort of thing, I just keep going. So if there's any mistakes, I just stop, redo the bit that I made the mistake and then sort it in editing. When I'm done filming, all I do is pack all the equipment away, take the cameras home, upload all the cards on the computer and sort of back them up and import them in the editing software that I want to do. The easiest way that I do it is load up Premiere Pro and create different projects based on what I've recorded and import those clips in just so that's all sorted. So whenever I come to edit, I just click on open a project and that's already done rather than having to create the new project over and over again after I've done each video. Normally when I do the thumbnail for the YouTube video, that is the first thing that I do when I start filming. So when I'm doing the editing, that's at the beginning of the clip. So I can just find that, scrub to it, get the picture that I want, save the photo and that's my thumbnail already sorted. Then all I do is continue on editing. Of course I have the intro, so it's what's up everybody, explain the video just so people know exactly what the video is when they're watching. Then I have my intro set up as a little template on the right hand side. So I can just drag that across, put that on and that intro is already done. Rather than creating a video, importing that video in each project, that sort of thing. It's much easier when you have the template already created so you can just drag and drop go on there. The same with the YouTube animation for the like and subscribe and the notification bell. That's already set up as a template as well as the outro. So all of that sort, I just edit the video and drag those on and that's it done. Another good tip which you can have is when you're actually editing the video, if you write down your timestamps as you're doing the edits in your notes and when you upload it, you can add that in your description. So here is the video that I was shooting and editing with 50 pound worth of Wish items. All I do is when I'm doing the edits on the video, when I'm up to that specific point that I want to make a note of, I'll go on the notes, add the timestamp, write what it is, then once the video is edited, all you have to do is copy that description, paste it in the YouTube description, and you're good to go. You don't have to sit through and scrub through the, the YouTube video trying to find the bits that you want, all that sort of thing. It's already done for you. The next thing that I do is when I'm adding my tags to the YouTube video, I write some in myself and the other ones I use a program called TubeBuddy. There's a link in the description below if you want to download that. Basically all it is, it's a plugin to your internet browser and you can actually search for keywords and it'll show you popular keywords and how popular it is compared to different other searches. So for example this one, if I put it in how to film a YouTube video, it'll come up with how to film a YouTube video, tell you the popularity and how good it is in the search and also give you different alternatives. So filming YouTube videos 2021, all those other sort of recommended tags, all you have to do is click on them, copy them, paste them in your tags so so easy. This helps quite a lot when you're doing different videos and you're not sure what other tags to put in. So if I'm doing a photography one I might do macro photography or studio photography. If I put those search results in it gives you alternatives to that search result so you can reach a wider audience. The same with the magic stuff so if I put in double lift for example it'll be how to do a double lift, double lift techniques, double lift whatever and it'll give you all those examples. All you have to do is click the button, copy, paste, Easy as that. The only thing left to do is once you've uploaded your YouTube video is to schedule it up for the date and time which you want to do. You can also turn that into a premiere video so people get a notification to say that this video is going to be uploaded in so many days and you can join them at the same time that gets uploaded so you can leave comments, talk to them, all that sort of thing. Or the other way is just schedule a video and it'll go up at that certain time and day. What I tend to do is on the Magic Channel I've got a Thursday at 6pm UK time. I schedule all my videos for that so every Thursday I'll have a new magic video and on the photography channel it's on a Friday so every Friday at 6 p.m. 
UK time, the photography videos are uploaded on the YouTube channels. So once you have that schedule set up, you can schedule in advance. So at the minute I've got three or four videos scheduled up for different things. That's much easier when you're creating content. So you can create it all in one day, edit it all, schedule it up, go on to the next set of content and you know you're sorted for a couple of weeks. On the back of that, what I do as well is create little snippets for TikTok and Instagram so I can promote those videos on those different platforms. I also do things on Facebook but not so much Facebook these days, it's more Instagram and TikTok. Basically what I do is if there's any tricks or any specific things of knowledge in those videos, when I'm actually editing them, I will cut those content out and create a new video based on that. Obviously with those videos for certain social media content, you need a specific aspect ratio. Like Instagram, you can have your square, your three by two, or your five by four. It's easier having a five by four because it fills up more of the screen. So when people are viewing your video, there's more of their screen filled up. Rather than just having a three by two, it's just a little strip like you would on YouTube. It's much easier to enlarge the video, crop out some of the sides, and get more on that. The same with TikTok, it's a nine by 16, so you're gonna crop it, so instead of having a horizontal video, you're gonna end up with a vertical video. What I do, once I've exported those videos, I have a video for Instagram and one for TikTok and Facebook. The TikTok and Facebook, you can use the same one because it'll fill up the screen, but Instagram needs to be a separate one. All I do from there is go on TikTok, upload the video, choose the sound, save it in the drafts, then I have everything in the drafts for whenever I want to post it. However, what I can do on Instagram and Facebook is actually schedule up posts. So the post is at a specific time and a specific day. So I can market that video to say that the new video has gone live or in preparation for the video going live, I can schedule up stuff to say, new video is coming out on Thursday. This is what's happening. This is a brief sort of example of the content which is coming on. So Facebook itself, I just use the business suite. You can just schedule straight up from there and it's really easy. However, for Instagram, I use a company called Hootsuite. And what you can do is connect up your Instagram account, upload your videos and photos, schedule them up for specific days and times, add your description and just post it. And what it does, that, that schedules it up, saves the content, then at that time and day, your content goes live. So generally, during the week, I have Instagram stuff set up for 1 p.m. and that goes live then. However, on the Thursday and Friday, I schedule them for 6 p.m. when the video goes live to say, this video is now live on YouTube, go over and check it out. And what that means is I can schedule stuff up for a month or two months or however long, then I don't have to worry about it. I can create this content, upload it, schedule it, go on to the next bit of content, rather than having to sit there and think, right, this video is gonna come out, so I need, to schedule, I need to post things at this time, that sort of thing. The only thing that I need to do now, once it's all scheduled up, is just go on, reply to comments, and that's it. So yeah, hope you enjoyed that little insight into how I plan my YouTube videos, shoot them, upload them, schedule the content for it, and also do the social media marketing for those videos as well. Hopefully you'll be able to take away something from that and implement it into your own workflow so you can actually create content and not have to worry about uploading things all of the time, that sort of thing. So when I'm at the studio creating content, I'll do maybe four or five videos in a day, then I don't have to worry about it doing every single day to upload new content. So if you thought the video was beneficial, then remember to give it a like, leave a comment, and if you're not already, subscribe. It'd be great if you could share the video with all your friends so they can benefit from it as well. And obviously when this video is live, you can also head on to Instagram and Facebook and stuff and comment on the content which I've created for this video specifically. And also TikTok, head over there. We've got some random videos on and also some informative ones. So just go for a bit of fun. Until next time, see ya.